You know the vulture from Brooklyn Nine-Nine? They'll show up right at the end to take over the case and get the credit. Like, they'll be at the door counting three, two, and then the vulture will show up, go one, kick the door down and get credit for solving the case. That's what this series feels like with Horrorby. Horrorby and Forrest spend some time together in the basement. They seem to influence each other, at least as much as the 30 seconds per episode allowed. And honestly, there was a lot we didn't see. I mean, someone had to keep lifting Horrorby back up onto the chair. They had potential, they looked like they were going somewhere, they have a lot of similarities honestly, and in the end, he apparently has a deep and meaningful bond with Naki. <laughs> Horribly displays a minuscule, minuscule ability to act for himself when he stood in front of Jin to protect him from Aruto. For the first time in a long time, we had a glimpse of his true self, and we had hope for him, and then... Guy got a redemption because he had a cute dog and a bad dad. Horribly loses Jin and he cries and it's a huge emotional moment to finally, after all this time, be able to express his own emotion when the Ark has denied it. He's been, say it with me, hacked by the Ark all this time and suddenly losing the Ark isn't going to make all of that go away. He clearly has PTSD and alutophobia and has been conditioned by the Ark. All this time he could have really benefited from some emotional support and finally, after all this time, everyone comes together to help Aruto. <laughs> what is that line next week? Anger, sadness, you of all people should know how that feels. Where do you get off yelling that at Hobby? You know, I'm not even going to go into that. I'm going to deal with that next week. Oh, I don't even want to think about next week. It would be such a huge injustice if Harvey dies a villain next week. If he has to die, I've been saying this the whole time, if he has to die, that's fine. As long as his honour isn't disrespected and he dies just as a regular totally evil villain. <laughs> Although killing him like Baby Jin would be awful too. Oh, I'm sorry, child, that you've been exposed to darkness. Unfortunately, I have no choice but to kill you now. Oh, if only your childhood wasn't shrouded in darkness. <laughs> sorry, kids, but if you've been taught bad things in your childhood, you're irredeemable. Oh, horribly, if only you weren't violently hacked and brainwashed and tortured for 12 years, if only your mind hadn't been broken by the Ark. So I, for the longest time, liked to imagine horribly doing public speaking stuff, the rights for humour girl and whatnot. So I'm really enjoying seeing this. Horribly addresses the public to tell them Aruto is now the Ark, and Human Gear says, Maybe Matt Spudge and I were right all along. Maybe they were. Maybe they were right in wanting freedom of Human Gear. Who knew? <laughs> I'm not really fond of the whole humans taught Human Gear how to have a heart thing. Human Gear should be allowed that by themselves. I hate the whole the good in humanity outweighs the bad things they've done mentality this series seems to have. Hobby's not the bad guy for primarily witnessing the bad in humanity. If humanity continues being awful to him, then what do you expect? If someone punches you in the face and someone else comes along and says, oh, but they're actually really nice, want to get to know them, I don't care, they punch me in the face! No, you know what it reminds me of? When you have abusive parents and you become an adult, you move out, you cut off contact, and about a decade later they track you down, begging to rekindle your relationships where they've changed, and you reasonably don't want to, but then you have the one friend who, who is not your friend, if they do this, going, oh, but you have to, they're family, don't you still love them? Like, I know humans have been bloody awful to you, Horribly, but they are the reason you're alive, so you're just gonna have to let them. <laughs> Other than that, it was a rocky start that made me think, damn it, Ikazuchi, you're my second favourite, I was rooting for you. <laughs> but other than that, his interaction with Ikazuchi was bloody sweet. Ikazuchi tells him he does indeed have a heart, and Horribly says, then ask your heart this, if a human killed your little brother, what would you do? While tearing off his bottom lip is trembling, my poor boy. I mean, the way he always looks at any one point like he's about to start crying, the way his bottom lip trembles when he's trying to hold it together, wow, so scary. <laughs> and Ikazuchi stops. And as always, we primarily get the most excitement for what the actors have to say about it afterwards. I liked that scene, and then Yamaguchi talked about it on his YouTube channel, and I love that scene. He said that Takazuchi was taken aback, not just because he didn't know the answer, but it made him realise that Horby's actions are indeed being driven by his heart, and trying to appeal to him like that isn't going to work. It's like Horby is saying, they destroyed my son, let me go, and Nikazuchi realised, I can't stop you then. Oh my god, give us the Horby and Nikazuchi lol, there's something there, I'm telling you! Nikazuchi is the only one who went to Horby despite the fact, while I don't love Naki suddenly believing in humans, I would have understood that coming from Nikazuchi because he does have ties there. But he didn't. While everyone else was focused on bloody Aruto, he went to Horibu, and he didn't try to tear him down like people do. He tried to build him up. He talked to him in the tone of voice you'd expect him to talk to Sabado, actually, complete with the hearty punch. My god, I wish we'd have seen more of them together. <laughs> and I like how he didn't hold it together for Kazuchi. He could easily have just continued walking, but he didn't. He stopped. And he was emotionally vulnerable. Oh, they need a V-Cinema. 
You know what else I really love? The fact that Horabi actually genuinely legitimately considers Subaru to be Kazuchi's brother. I just find that interesting that Mesmaj and I seem to take the family dynamics really seriously. Whereas Anato is like, wow, they're just like real brothers. You know, they are real brothers and Horabi sees that. The fact that he asks Ikazuchi what he'd do if someone killed his little brother shows that not only does he view Subaru as his actual little brother, but he views their relationship comparable to him and Jin. Despite it being caused and tainted by humans, Horibi sees it's real. I felt in that scene that Ikazuchi was the only person so far who's tried to talk to Horibi for Horibi, not just for humans. Like, Horibi is his first priority, which is nice. He needs bloody someone. Up until now, it's been more like trying to calm Horibi down so he stops wanting to destroy humanity, talk to Horabe about his true purpose, so he does that instead of trying to destroy humanity. But Kazuchi seemed more focused on Horabe himself and his own actual well-being. And now I'm coming in halfway through editing, hello, because a friend pointed out to me the way Horabe says, how can you not hate him? Like, like he thinks that Kazuchi will understand. Aruto killed Jin, how can you not hate him? He's not saying that's why he hates him, he's asking Akazuchi why he doesn't. Oh wow, that cuts deep, that hurts so much. I hate the fact that we are still subscribing to the belief that human gear are indeed tools. It doesn't matter how many times someone passionately says otherwise, if you are reviving Jin purely to help, then you are still treating him like a tool. If Aruto and Horabi weren't about to fight, they wouldn't have revived him. They're not trying to revive him because he deserves to live, but to stop Horabi and Aruto from fighting. Why is that if not treating him like a doll. This is going to sound really harsh. Aruto's grief should not be on par with Horabi's. Horabi aimed at Izu and shot Izu, but Aruto aimed at Horabi and shot Jin. If Izu hadn't died, no one would have died, but if Jin hadn't died, Horabi would have died. Horabi not only has to deal with the fact he's lost his son, but that his son died protecting him. Horabi, who has been hacked by the Ark for 12 years, finally broken free, only to have this sudden wave of freedom and emotions that, which you can't expect someone who isn't used to that to know what to do with. I'm sorry, but there are way more layers with Horabi than with Aruto, and I find myself not really able to sympathise with Aruto because of how Horabi is being treated. If Horabi was being treated better, and Aruto stayed exactly the same as he is now, I would be more sympathetic, but because the focus is all on Aruto, Aruto's grief, not Horabi's, then I just don't want to hear about it. Izu went after Horabi and died, but Aruto went after Horabi and Jin died. Horabi didn't seek Izu out, she came to him. Again, more or less. If Horabi has to die in the end, just don't let it be as a villain. Or as what on earth is his entire story for? I am totally up for an ending in which both sides are as bad as each other. But if it ends with Aruto as a hero and Horabi as a villain, that's blatantly unfair to his entire character. I do have to add though, Azu is manipulating both of them. Like I said, I'd be more sympathetic towards Aruto if Horabi hadn't been treated awfully this entire time. Aruto absolutely is being manipulated, to be fair. I just find it infuriating how everyone cares about Aruto now he's being manipulated despite actually having free will so it's not as bad, it's bad, I'm not trying to downplay it, but in comparison it's not as bad, that doesn't mean it isn't bad, but for Horabi it's worse. Whereas Horabi spent this entire series almost being hacked, which is worse, and treated like the villain for it, it's that primarily that bothers me. One more thing, I've seen a lot of people complain about pacing, as if we aren't in the middle of a bloody pandemic and they didn't have to go on hiatus. Okay, it's not an exact science, but this is the way I'm thinking about it. For example, I personally think that killing Jin in episode 43 and then reviving him two episodes later is way too soon. However, if they'd hypothetically killed him in episode 43 and then later revived him in episode 51, let's say, I don't think that would have felt rushed. So I'm not going to criticize that. It's not exact. I know these episodes would have been different if we hadn't have had the hiatus and subsequently lost a few episodes, but it's more to do with the ratio. I think certain things that feel rushed wouldn't have felt rushed if we had just had a few more episodes. I hope I'm explaining that well enough. Also, the way I'm viewing it, I'm treating this as if it would have ended next week regardless. And without the pandemic, we would have had six more episodes, bringing us up to 51 don't know if that's true, but that's how I'm trying to see it. That's right, isn't it? Because it's ending with 45, and in the hiatus we had two presidential specials, two job specials, a shooting special, a 35.5 episode. So that's six episodes that may or may not have been ordinary episodes if not the hiatus. 
I don't know if that's true. It definitely doesn't feel like it was always planned to have 45 episodes. And anyway, enough over explaining it. So I think that Williamson currently has no reason to be here. We could easily have ended the series without him. He's basically just doing what Guy could have done had he not been redeemed because he had a bad dad and a cute dog. However, if we had six more episodes with him, I'm sure I'd feel differently. He would have had more potential and more time to do stuff. I'm interrupting myself again to say that I still would have complained about how he didn't use to be here if he just didn't give Guy that completely undeserved redemption, but that's where we are. However, I think Ewer's declaration that humor get aren't tools happened way too late. Even if we'd have had 51 episodes, I still it still would have felt too late. It's not that she said it in the penultimate episode, it's that it took 44 episodes to say it. Does that make sense? So in that case, even if we hadn't had the hiatus, we still would have had a few more episodes left after this. It still would have felt too late. But I did actually really, really love that scene, everything about it. Interrupting myself again, because apparently I can't make my mind up, but you know how you watch a scene and think, oh wow, that's amazing, and then you watch it again and think, oh, actually, everything I'm about to say, I definitely do still feel, but upon second watch, parts of it actually felt kind of empty, like we were missing something, but I can't quite figure out what that something is. Maybe humans not taking responsibility? Not for this, I mean, for the bigger picture. It's a bit annoying to see humans treating human gear the way that if you'd have just been like this in the first place with Horribly rather than going in all guns blazing, I doubt we'd be where we are now. That was such a good example of how one nice act doesn't absolve humanity of everything else. Ewer came and calmed the situation, but protests elsewhere were still happening. There was no, this human says something nice, so let's all go back to being treated like tools with a smile. The issue is still an issue, and it was about stopping humans, not the human gear. I was worried the focus would be on stopping humour gear, but it wasn't, not in that scene. The humans were clearly the aggressors in that scene. And she forgave that one humour gear who lashed out. Gear, my god. She's another character who I feel did not get enough screen time. And I mentioned in my last video, I've been waiting for her stance on whether or not she still considers humour gear as tools. I do think this should have happened earlier. I wish I'd have had more time to enjoy her more. I do love them. The protest was called a riot. That's exactly what I talked about in my last video. They were protesting. Ames came dressed for a riot. That Williamson guy called it a riot and only then did it all kick off. That was actually really nice to see because that really is exactly how it happens in my experience at least. I don't like how the focus is on Adoto being manipulated by Azu using his grief and everyone coming together for him when no one cared about trying to help horribly after learning he'd been hacked. Until Adito happened to be in the right place at the right time, no one actively tried to help him. I think it's happening too fast. I think without the pandemic, it wouldn't be happening too fast. But the damage of treating Horribly awfully and then all coming together to help Adito has already been done. And so it wouldn't have mattered how long they spent on this. I still wouldn't have felt at ease about it. I do wish this change in Horribly had lasted a bit longer. I think three episodes isn't enough, but I also think if you'd have had 51 episodes instead, then... I mean, I'd still be going on about her hobby not having enough screen time. But if we'd have had 43 to 51 and an appropriate amount of screen time for everyone, I think that would have been plenty. So again, that's not something I'm going to be critical of. And now I'm interrupting myself one last time, I hope, to say that there's absolutely nothing wrong with saying, wow, yeah, this episode was really rushed. You can criticise the pacing while also being understanding of the situation. The people I'm talking about were also complaining that there were too many clip episodes and that the haters even existed in the first place, because... Because in terms of this episode, I agree, I think the pacing was too fast, and I don't think a lot of it was to do with the hiatus, I think a lot of it was to do with leaving things too late. Like, like I hope I've just explained succinctly. <laughs> I'm sure a few years later, people who didn't experience Zero One through the pandemic will have similar complaints to the ones I've seen about Gokaiser, that there were too many cameos. Though those complaints are few and far between, they do bother me because you have to understand why that happened. It wasn't just an anniversary series, it was an anniversary series airing when the tsunami happened. This is no longer just the first Reiwa series. This is a series that aired during a global pandemic and in a few years time people are going to forget that and complain about the ending being rushed and the clip episodes and not understand why it happened this way. And I hope, as with Gokaja, there will be people ready to remind them that actually, given the situation, they handled it bloody well. I'm saying this now because I don't think I'll be emotionally with it next week. Zero One has meant the absolute world to me. It's given me a character for the first time that I actually can relate to, even if he's being treated terribly and it doesn't give me much hope for myself. <laughs> it's given me the opportunity to talk about my own issues. 
it's given me some amazing friends I never would have met without. It's given me this, and I cannot wait to get to my purple scorpion tattoo. 